Welcome to 2023 Rose Bowl coverage here with the lineups team. I'm your host, Jacob Wayne, joined as always by Will Schwartz and Cody Maelstrom. We've been waiting for this one, boys. So excited to talk about this game right now. We got Michigan against Alabama in the college football semifinal game here. Quick news, we don't have to talk about opt-outs. Finally, no opt-outs for either team in this one. A couple of injury notes, though, that I want to hit quickly before we get into some matchup breakdown. For Michigan, Zach Zinter sadly suffered a season-ending leg injury against Ohio State. Will not be playing here. Cornerback Will Johnson missed the Big Ten Championship game after an injury against Ohio State, but he's expected to be a full go for this game. Junior Colson, linebacker, does, does have an injury, but he's going to play through it with a cast on his hand. Just a quick note there. For Alabama, do have a couple of injuries. Uh, Jace McLellan missed the SEC Championship. His status is worth monitoring for sure. And then cornerback Kool-A McKinstry left the SEC Championship game with a minor concussion. But he should be fine to go for this game. Let's get in the matchup. We have Michigan currently one and a half point favorites. Money line available around minus 120, minus 125, depending on, where, on your book. Over under around 45 points at the moment. Schwartz, going to go to you first on this one. How are we feeling about the Michigan Wolverines in this game? Yeah, this is the most I've ever anticipated a game. I, I'm say, not the most excited I've ever been for a game. The most I've ever anticipated a game because I've been thinking about nothing other than this for about a month now. I'm very nervous. I'm very optimistic. It, it, this is the, the whole roller coaster of emotions, and we haven't even kicked off. It won't for a couple days. But first thing I want to hit is that I don't want to mince words about this. Michigan is going into a semifinal with Alabama without their best player. No, not possible best player without our best player. You look at the Associated Press's All-America team. Zach is our not only our first, only first teamer, he's our only first or second teamer. First of all, that's incredibly disrespectful and incorrect. But it's a corre- it, the one thing that is correct is that it shows just Zach is our clear leader as an emotional leader. As, you know, he's our senior captain. And he's the best player on our offensive line and in our offense and on the team. So... Huge loss, showed a lot what the guys were able to do. I th- I really do think that Blake scoring the touchdown, the play after he broke his leg, instilled belief. If we had stalled out there, who knows what would have gotten into those guys' heads about whether or not they could block without Zach. But this is Alabama. It's a different animal. I truly believe that Michigan is the best team in the country. I've said it all year. We've done a weekly uh, poll, a top 25. I had Michigan first before the season. I didn't drop them down for a single week. And look at this. Everyone has them at number one now, and that is earned. I don't think Alabama has the athletes to get after our defense the way that the, their teams have had in the past. They've had Henry Ruggs's and Jalen Waddles. They've had all sorts of receiving talent that can get downfield and find space. And I don't think they can. I think the secondary is the best unit on this Michigan team. Uh, if Will, Will's had a month to heal, that's tremendous. He's our best player now with Zach out. He's our best player on either side of the football. Rod Moore having a phenomenal end to the season, as is Mikey Sainer still. The new heart and soul of the team was Zinter out. I mean, the dude's been around forever, changed positions, done whatever's been needed, and he's been just absolutely great as a second as a secondary player. I don't think Alabama can get can get open. If we can keep the top on the defense, Jalen Milrow is not going to hit the big plays that he's it's been so great at hitting and will force him to stay underneath and kind of dissect a defense with a precision that he's not usually accustomed to leaning on. And I don't know that he has. Let's say there, Schwartz, before we get into the, the Michigan side of the ball, I want to talk about Jalen Moro a little bit yeah. more. Um, like you said, he is heavily dependent on the deep ball. 24 big time throws and no turnover worthy plays on 20 plus yard throws. I think that's the key on defense is to force him to throw in the middle of the field and contain him with pass rush integrity, not let him hurt you as much with his legs. Cody, I'll bring you in. I want to get your thoughts on the Jalen Moro matchup here. Do you think Miller has an edge on this Michigan defense, or how do you see that matchup playing out? I mean, he's definitely bringing a presence that Michigan just has not dealt with at his level, and it's going to be really intriguing to see how these linebackers handle it. I, I mean, we're we're talking about someone who can easily like run to the side and with a flick of the wrist throw a 50-yard bomb on a rope, which is just so funny because, I mean, cut that distance 30 yards and he can't hit his receivers and stride to save his soul. Um no, I, I, what Will's saying is that they don't have the receivers to get, to get open deep. That's just absurd. I mean, this offense is six in explosiveness. And, yeah, well, it's because Milrose hitting his receivers deep. It's also because his receivers are creating space and getting open deep. Though I will agree with Will um, that the secondary for Michigan is definitely an elite unit. 
Their explosiveness has dipped, though. They are 42nd in defensive pass explosiveness. Um, so that's good. that's an interesting little battle there. Um, I, I, I Are we getting to our, our caps yet? I, I, I'm indicating one way. Basically, I'm saying that Alabama is going to find some success with explosiveness here and there. It's not going to be consistent by any means. You know, screw it. I'll just say, I'll just go right into the handicap. Um, I'm on the over. Um, I grabbed under 46 and a half right away, like like right away. As soon as the market opened, I figured that was going to tick down. It did tick down to 44 and a half. And now I'm going bigger on the opposite direction. Once I got to take a look into this, Milro is going to bring a stress to this defense that this defense just hasn't seen. And I think he that will equate to success early on. Um, now over the full course of the game, we will probably see adjustments. We'll probably see more um, of the defense trying to put pressure on the outside to make them run up the middle for a little success. But I do think Alabama will get their chances. And it's just I can't ignore the the fact that he can flip the field on a dime like that. Um, and then I, I guess I guess we haven't talked about Michigan, so I, I guess I'll stop there. Um, but, yeah, to answer your question, I think Alabama and Milro can do enough to do their part towards what's going to be my handicap. Yeah, we'll talk more about uh, the over in a minute here. And I agree with you, Cody, on the over. Um Jermaine Burton, I think, has really come into his own as a difference-making wide receiver for Alabama as well. Maybe not quite the Devonta Smith level, but certainly still a very capable playmaker and averaging over 22 yards per catch this season. Just somebody who can take the top off the defense in a moment's notice. And, I mean, we saw it with Michigan last year against TCU. Like, this defense can be beaten at times by big plays. I think those big plays will be there at times for Alabama. But let's circle back around to Schwartz. Let's talk about the Michigan side of the ball and J.J. McCarthy. McCarthy should be healthier in this game, which I think is a huge deal. That with that ankle injury down the stretch, and I think he'll be a lot healthier, a lot more able to run the ball and throw on the move in this game, which I think is massive. But I want to ask you specifically, Shorts, how are you feeling about this Michigan offensive line without Zinter and with the issues they've had at times in pass protection this season? Yeah, firstly, I just want to circle back and say, I'm not trying to say Alabama doesn't have dudes at receiver. I'm just trying to say this is the best secondary in the country. I'm not alone in saying that PFF agrees with me. Michigan's at the top of the coverage grades, has been all year pretty much. And Alabama's not the best receiver. They're not the type of receiving core that they've had in the past that can break any secondary, including the best. They have players. We have better players. They have, good, they have, they have really good players. Ours are better. But on the Michigan side of the football, I definitely have some concerns. As I mentioned, Zach Center. Best player on the team. It, it's going to really hurt our ability to run the ball up the middle against a physical Alabama front. Again, not the most superstar Alabama front we've seen, but I think this O line has taken a weird step back from last year. We saw Carson Barnhart really, really struggle, really struggle against Penn State. And I don't think that Dallas Turner is necessarily Chop Robinson, but he's a problem. I, I think that JJ is going to, JJ being healthier is going to be vital because he's going to have, in the past game, I think the run game is going to be diminished. I don't think this is a Blake Corum goes for 150 yards game. As much as I love him and think he steps up in the biggest moments, I don't think this is his moment. I think this is a J.J. McCarthy game, the J.J. McCarthy game, actually. I think J.J. is going to have a tremendous game, not just in terms of efficiency and flashy moments like he had that beautiful throw against OSU, but in terms of volume. And he's going to have to do it with his athleticism. As much as of a pure passer as J.J. can be, he's going to have to be on the move, creating space and moving the defense with his legs. Healthy, I think he's incredibly capable of that. Uh, finding space, planting and throwing, throwing wall on the run. I think that that, that is going to be that's going to be the way Michigan has to routinely move the ball. That's not just going to have to be a few out of structure plays. I think JJ's up to it. Wayne, you and I have talked about this uh, several times, but Colson Loveland over the middle is going to be uh, a big target for JJ, who's much more confident throwing between the hashes than a lot of college football quarterbacks are. This is this is the opportunity for JJ to show that he's the dude coming into the season. I wanted to hit the transfer portal for a quarterback or coming out of last season. I was wrong. JJ is phenomenal. He's the best quarterback we've had in ages, the best pure passing quarterback in a really long time. And I think this is his moment. He has every opportunity to get after this Alabama defense. And that's how that's Michigan's best route to moving the ball in this game. Yeah, I think Alabama can be vulnerable against the deep pass at times. Uh, we saw it earlier this year with Quinn Ewers in that Texas win. We saw it with LSU, Jane Daniels before he got hurt in that game. And then we saw it with Georgia early on. They had that first drive where Carson Beck was really dealing downfield. And then I, I hated their approach as we got further into that game. They really tried to press for the outside run, uh, tried to run a lot of sweeps. And that's just not what you can do against Alabama. Alabama is more vulnerable against inside zone, inside power. And I think Blake Horn, Donovan Edwards, they're going to be able to run up the gut in this game. But Schwartz is right. It's all about J.J. McCarthy for me, especially attacking the slot. I think Roman Wilson, Colson Loveland in the middle of the field, 
those guys are going to be big playmakers in this game. Um, we're not doing player props in this video, but I'd look for a Colston Loveland receiving yards prop in this one. I think he is the X factor in this game for the Michigan offense. Cody, let's just talk about the Michigan offense a little bit. Round out that part of your cap on the over in this game. Yeah, so I was talking to a friend of mine who I highly respect in this industry, and he, he was in the same exact mindset of what I brought up to him. If Michigan is going to have success on offense, it 100% depends on J.J. McCarthy getting back his mobility. If J.J. McCarthy is not mobile and he's not doing anything to shift this defense, um, it's a long day for Michigan and detrimental to my over. Um, you got to shift this defense. I'm so, the, the injuries to the offensive line, just what we've seen um, the last couple of games, it, it's – it's not going to bode well against Michigan's front, even though I have said that this is one of the weaker Alabama defensive lines we've seen in quite some time. Um, it doesn't matter. The the skill, the the difference level here, it, it's more than enough to, I think, at least cushion the blow of how weak they've been against the inside zone. I don't see Corum having like a crazy game. I think he can turn out like yards here and there. My issue is it won't be consistent, and lack of inconsistency doesn't work against a team like Alabama. So that's why I said it really depends on J.J. McCarthy uh, getting his mobility back. He has to shift the coverage here. And and I keep, I keep forgetting what year it was. Um, he needs to find the deep ball that he did against Ohio State that one year where he just really, really, that was attacked, last season. The lack, really attacked the lack of explosiveness. Because if you're really stretching out this defense, that's going to also be beneficial to, towards the towards the ground game. Help kind of uh, your offensive line get a push back, uh, open up gaps. It, it, but he, it all starts with JJ McCarthy running around, um, just putting stress on the second level. And, and I see it happening. I truly do see it happening. And, I, and I'm not a Michigan fan, um, but I will admit I have been so darn impressed with um, kind of his development even though it's been, it's been a rough couple of games, but uh, that he was injured, obviously. Now he's had time to heal up. If I see a mobile McCarthy right out of the gate, I'm feeling really confident about Michigan. I'm feel, feeling really confident about um, the over. And, uh, and that, that's where I think it's going to be a heavy, heavy part to their success. Yeah, I love the uh, McCarthy comments there. And definitely quieter towards the end of the season. But I feel like Cody and I had the same cap on this game because I wrote down about – how that Ohio State game last year, they saved his deep passing, the advanced passing playbook for that game, and then really opened it up when Ohio State tried to play against the run. If Alabama tries to do the same thing that Ohio State did in that game and load the box to slow down Blake Horam, McCarthy can beat them over the top consistently. We've seen him do it at different times. I feel like people are giving up on JJ McCarthy because he had a quiet end to the season, but so much of that was the injury, the issues of pass protection. But if McCarthy's mobile and healthy, it completely changes the dynamic for this offense. So I think the over is a great look. And yeah, I, I think Michigan's defense obviously really impresses season long metrics, but you look at some of the offenses they played in the big 10 this year and Alabama is going to throw a lot of different things at them that they just haven't seen this season, even in their, in their bigger games against um, Kyle McCord with Ohio state and drew Aller with Penn state. Neither of those guys were putting stress on the defense. Like Jalen Murrow is this year. Milrow's consistency, his lack of consistency, rather, is the big reason why I think Michigan wins this game. I think Alabama puts up points on the board, but it's not nearly at a consistent rate as Michigan can do with McCarthy fully healthy now. Schwartz, we'll circle back to you. You haven't been named an official bet for this game. Are you taking an official side on the total or the spread here? I think I'm going to. Uh, but first, I want to look at some J.J. McCarthy deep ball stuff since we've really gotten into that. I want to compare him to two guys quickly. One is Quinn Ewers, the only quarterback who's beaten Alabama this year and did it with the deep ball. The other is the best deep ball passer in the country. No debate, not even a little. Michael Penix. Uh, PFF grade, Quinn's sitting at an 83.8. JJ and Penix are at a 92.9 and a 92.8. Adjusted completion, Quinn's at 32.5%. Penix is at 48 and JJ's at 59.1. Obviously, Penix has a much higher, it's over a much bigger sample size. That's why his grade is so uh, similar, even though he has a lower completion percentage or adjusted completion percentage, but the point here is that J.J. is extremely capable. He's un he's also unflappable. He's been in as many big moments as any quarterback remaining in this tournament. I mean, probably more big moments than the rest of the quarterbacks remaining in this tournament, uh, combined perhaps after having been through a couple OSU games, been through a playoff last year. The experience has not been on Michigan's side recently. There's, I mean, last year was TCU. They hadn't been in the playoff, but it was a veteran team. The year before, Georgia, who's always around these competitions, I think Michigan's finally settled in. I hope the moment doesn't get the best of Jim Harbaugh again. This is the one soft metric that I want to talk about. I'm terrified of the month off. If Michigan won a semifinal and then played Alabama in the final, I'd be all over us to win. I'm terrified about Nick Saban having a month to prepare. 
versus Jim Harbaugh having a month to overthink. I don't want to see anything like a like a linebacker running the ball on fourth and goal when you have the best goal line running back in the modern history, uh, not modern history, in the recent era of college football, Michigan's all-time touchdown leader, Blake Corum. That makes me scared in a game where Michigan has the edge, I think, all over the football field. That being said, officially, one more time, I'm backing Michigan. I'm not going to back the spread because that feels, even at, even at a point or two, it feels dangerous. I'm going to back Michigan on the money line, even with a little bit of juice. It's only juice if you lose. And knocking on wood, I don't think we will. And knocking on wood again, I don't think we will this year. This is the year. 15 and 0. Go blue. Schwartz, I love that you brought up the uh, overthinking aspect of things because I feel like people came away from watching that TCU game last year saying, oh, Michigan wasn't prepared. They were just looking ahead to Georgia. And I felt it was the opposite. I think they overthought that matchup when they could just line up and run the ball and just bully TCU in that game like Georgia did. I think Jim Harbaugh is going to learn from past mistakes. I think this this coaching staff has matured. I think Sharon Moore is a massive X factor in a coaching sense with his ability to scheme up offensive blocking designs. I, th- I think Michigan has a better a better coaching staff right now in this game. And I know that's crazy to say against Nick Saban, but with the coordinators that Michigan has on their staff, I trust that coaching staff to be the better one in this game. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to cut Cody off for it. Um, come, I'm guessing he's coming next. But I did want to mention about Coach Sharon. I think that that's tr- his last three games, I think it's going to end up being a positive. I think that with Sharon having that head coaching experience in his back pocket, Jim might be able to take on less in this game. There's no reason he needs to call the entire offense with a guy who's been doing it against the best defenses in the country for a month now. With less, with less on his plate, more experience, maybe a little bit of clarity. I think this is Jim Harbaugh's moment. He's he's come close to winning so much, and he's truly captured so little in terms of like not just bowls, but championships, Super Bowls. I think this is his moment to finally put it all together in uh, maybe the most pivotal moment, pivotal moment yet. And Sharon Moore is going to be a huge reason why his support. Yep, agreed, Schwartz. So for me, official picks in this game: Michigan money line minus one twenty and over forty four and a half points. Cody, official picks for year. Yeah, over forty four and a half. Um, and I'll quickly chime in about the coaching thing. That was one thing that popped in my head was the TCU game. And I do agree with Wayne. I don't think it was so much that they were looking ahead. I just think it was just overthinking it. I I mean, we saw a goal line where, what, they had three plays at the goal line and not a single sneak. Um, Jim Harbaugh has been a thorn in my side. I've absolutely hated his guts ever since he came to Michigan. He was a big reason why I was a Michigan hater for a majority of my adult life. I've came around on it when he started winning me money. Um, but man, it's just that that moment keeps playing in my head. If you can't win those critical situation moments, you're not going to beat a team like Bama. Uh, granted, he has improved, but also being kind of the methodical dominant successory type offense also helps. Kind of hard to screw that up in short situations like that. So yeah, that, that'll be another interesting thing, uh, interesting battle to work with because I mean, Nick Saban's the greatest coach of all time. I mean, you give him a month. It's that's it's that's a scary thought, but uh yeah, super excited for that. Uh, see how Michigan can run back in those critical situations in the, in the semifinal in the semifinal game. And I'll just say it once again, uh, over 44 and a half. All right, and Schwartz, you said you like the under, if you had to make a pick on the total? Yeah, and by the way, uh, sorry, not to beat this to death, but as far as specifically goal line offense, literally all we've done this year on every goal line is just give it to Coram two or, th- two or three times. There's been no creativity, and I don't want creativity. We're better at the point of attack, and we have the best running back to do it, so I hope I just hope that carries over. Anyways, yeah, I actually disagree with you guys on the total. I'm not making a play on that official, but uh, if we're to take inside of this number, I'm going under. I think as much as I think Michigan has the opportunity to find some big plays, it's not going to be every drive. I think the offensive line thing is a huge issue with Zach out and the weakness we've seen at tackle from time to time. Whereas on the other side, I have been very vocal in this video and beyond about how I don't think Alabama has the dudes to consistently move it on this. Will Milrow find a big throw or two? Yes. But I don't know they put together almost any sustained drives, knocking on wood again, as I have been throughout this video. I I, I do think that there's going to be some hero moments from both quarterbacks and both offenses, but this is going to be a hard-fought game. And even when the offenses are working, these aren't fast offenses, especially Michigan's. So the pace of play that we try to establish in every game, which is literally slower than some of the service academies, that always plays to an under. We've hit plenty of unders while being completely dominant on offense. You you can score on every possession, but if there aren't many possessions, there's only so many points. 
Yeah, sure. uh, we got to end this video. We're up to 20 minutes. But I, would, I do want to say on, on the pace of play thing, Schwartz, you're right. Michigan has the second slowest pace of play. I pulled this up right in between Army and Air Force. But to me, a lot of that is them just sitting on the ball once they have a big lead against an inferior opponent. In these games against Ohio State and Penn State, their pace has picked up quite a bit. And I think we're going to see more of that in this game. But yeah, Michigan money line in the over for me. Can't wait to watch this game, man. It's going to be a great one no matter what. And hopefully our Michigan Wolverines come out on top. But thanks, guys, for watching. Check out our Sugar Bowl coverage for uh, the Washington and Texas matchup. And we'll have you covered for a lot of content on the national championship as well. Please like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one.